Right, I've got another tool upgrade to show you this evening. A while back I showed the Repton ball turning attachment and how to use it on the mini lathe and the Myford ML7. And at that time I bought this um, Myford ball turning attachment on eBay. I got it for half price. And um, this is the one that is sold by RDG. And they say that it can turn spherical diameters up to 38 millimeter in diameter. Now when I set this up um, for the first time on the Myford ML7 I wanted to do a 32 millimeter diameter ball and um, this is a piece of 32 millimeter diameter bar. When I came to bring the tool in to do the centre check on the front of the bar, this diameter here clashes with this radius here on the tool. So I'm unable to do centre checks on large diameter work. And you really need to be able to do those uh, centre checks to actually set this tool properly. Now I could have got around the problem by milling this radius away here at a right angle but I actually don't like this carbide tip that they've used for this tool plus I wanted to make this centre part of the tool better um, make it much more versatile so it's able to machine larger diameter work also I found on this tool when it's set on the Myford that the centre height of the insert is incorrect. They say that they're preset for Myford lathes but um, I don't think they're all spot on. So what I've done is I've remade the centre section of the tool. I've made it longer so that I can use it to turn larger spherical diameters and I've chosen a different carbide insert you can see the two different angles on those inserts this one's got a lot more clearance and I think it's much more suited to this type of work also I've made it so that the tool post part can be taken out or it can swivel in the holder like that and be set in that position and that makes it better in the actual ball turning attachment um, for doing the concave turning so to make this part I measured the existing one and that is 15 millimeter wide and I could only find a piece of 16 millimeter square mild steel bar and if you're new to machining I'd just like to show you how you can use a four jaw independent chuck to turn this down um, to size saving yourself having to use a milling machine so I've got my six inch four jaw independent chuck on the lathe and as you can see I have two jaws um, set that way round and the other two set the other way round and then the bar goes in like that and tighten up and I've already um, got this one so it's even and you can see that I can now machine that and get that nice and square so I'm going to be using this carbide insert turning tool and I've unlocked the compound slide and wound it back a couple of hundred thou um, so that the face of the compound is a little bit back on the actual bottom slide 
so it doesn't overhang. And then I take the tool up and zero it on the front face of the bar, set my stop and that's so that I can't accidentally take it in too far and then I shall advance the tool on the compound by 10th hour time, unlock the compound, move it in 10th hour. And before I start, I've set the speed to the slowest speed, which is about 300 revs. And before I start the spindle, I spin the chuck to see that everything's clear and lock the saddle. advance the tool slowly on the cross line. And that one's cleaned up nicely so I can turn it around in the jaws and do the other side and get it to size. Next I drilled this hole 7 16 diameter dead center and five millimeter drill in the center at the back there and tapped for six millimeter thread. Now you could just face the tool holder off here um, to the same height as the ball turning attachment so it's flush with the top face there but I've chosen to turn it off part way and leave this section a bit thicker for added strength um, when the spindle of the tool post goes in there. And I'll show you on the MyFoot now how I've done that in a three jaw chuck. So firstly I take the ball turning attachment apart. And take this part out here. And then I can load this into the three jaw chuck. Um, because of this um, diameter at the back here, I can only hold on about 200 thou of this diameter here. So tighten that one up. And then I put the piece to be machined in that. And before I tighten the side screws on that one, I bring in the running center and lock that one up. And then tighten the side screws. 
and the centre will prevent that from coming out of the jaws. And then it's the same procedure as when I used the four jaw shark. Touch on the front face and set the carriage stop and lock that one up. Lock the carriage and then advance the tool by 10 thou on the compound slide and lock it and then just check nothing clashes by hand And you continue facing it off like that and be careful that you don't touch the um, face of the ball turning attachment. I leave it about five thou above. So that's the bottom part of the tool finished. And I've turned that diameter there to about 20 millimetre. So next I'm going to be making this part here and I've got a piece of um, 0.800 diameter bright mild steel turned it down to 0.700 diameter and left it a bit longer than the one I've already made and then I've put the tip on the top there like that so that there's a very slight overhang and marked it up and then I'm going to put that in the vertical milling slide on the Myford and mill that off um, for where the carbide insert sits. And I'll leave this piece of bar hole like this um, without turning this smaller diameter um, for two reasons. One is that I'll have a much better hold in the um, milling vise on the lathe, on the larger diameter. And the other reason is when the, the um, insert face is finished and I've um, tapped it for the torque screw, I can actually screw the tip on the top of the piece and turn this down to size for the tool holder but leave the shoulder a bit short and then I can keep putting it in the tool holder and in the ball turning attachment and checking with a clock over the edge of the tip and keep facing this shoulder off until I achieve the correct centre height for the lathe. So to do that I'd have this bolted to the cross slide on the lathe and then I'd use my height um, slip gauge for the Myford ML7 with a clock and put that over the edge of the tool, make the adjustments until I get it absolutely spot on centre height. So to cut a long story short, I've done the milling on that one and deburred it and you can see the insert goes on there nice with a very slight overhang over the front there, probably about 20, 30 thou overhang. And then all that I do is I get a nice vise like that, put it on a flat surface Put that part in that vise, tighten it up 
and then I carefully check that the insert is dead equal on there and in the center and then get a transfer punch this transfer punch just goes through the insert there's a taper in the um, insert and it only just goes through so like I said I line it up very carefully by eye it must be dead center or dead equal on there and then I put the transfer punch in give it a knock and then I'll have the center punch hole for drilling and tapping for the four millimeter Torx screw so now I'll drill that on the bench drill and then tap it for this um, four millimeter Torx screw incidentally there's a seller on eBay in Britain that sells all these um, different size of these Torx screws for these um, inserts or you can get them from China so I used a center drill and the drill and tap for four millimeter thread and when I drilled it I tended to have the drill slightly towards the back of the center um, punch dot and that is to make sure that this um, thread is slightly off center to the hole on the um, carbide insert and what that does is when the um, tapered torx screw goes down into the insert it screws down and the taper pushes the back face of the um, insert onto the shoulder um, that you've milled so when that tightens up nice and tight it's a good fit along that edge and there's no way that it can actually move so to finish off it's finished turn the diameter to fit the lower half um, like that and like I explained earlier leave that plus and then you can put the um, ball turning attachment on the machine and keep machining that um, shoulder there until you've achieved the exact center height for your machine and then I put it back in the um, milling vise on the lathe and machined these two angles off to give it clearance so the new tool insert there is finished and this is set on my MyFed ML7 and if you've bought this ball turning attachment from RTG I want to show you a simple improvement which will make it the quickest ball turning attachment to set and that is simply this scribed center line on the top here so I've got a 32 millimeter diameter piece of brass and I've faced it off to 32 millimeter long um, threaded it for 8 mil and screwed it onto my 8 millimeter mandrill then I wind the tool in and get the center line dead in the center of the bar then I set the stop on the carriage and set the tool um, dead center on the end of the bar and remember that it must be nice and square then I wind the tool back and lock up the tool holder bolts or grub screws and that one is now set and ready to do the ball and you can see that 
it will take equal cuts off either side so you know it's dead center and that's how easy it is to set this tool now and just before I turn this ball I'm going to show you a little trick how to get that center line correct on the top face so to get that line dead right I've taken the top of the ball turning attachment off again put it in the um, mini lathe jaws and left the tool in there that I've made and then I put a square on the ways and get the tool dead vertical like that and then my turning tool which I know is on center height can be used to scribe over the front face of the or the top face of that ball turning attachment and that's the quickest and easiest way to get the line scribed in exactly the right place in the center right so now I have the lathe all set up and ready to go um, it's worth putting a couple of chamfers on the um, ends of the um, bar just to allow the tool to go over nicely on the first cuts and really nice because it's dead on center.
and that's the ball finish turned. So I'm very pleased with the upgrades on this tool um, and if you think about it you can actually make a new centre piece like this and adapt this for any lathe really by adjusting your centre height and to make this run really smooth I use molybdenum disulfide paste um, on the contact surfaces and it runs really smooth and it's a really lovely strong tool and the simple addition of that center line makes the tool dead easy to set up and very quick to use and out of all the ball turning attachments I've seen and used I actually think this is the best one so I hope you enjoyed the video in one of my next videos I hope to show how easy it is to make this super precision wick feed oiler and how to test it.